What's up everyone? Welcome back to another What Science video. We have all seen the pictures of ripped, muscular CrossFit athletes. In fact, the average BMI of a well-trained CrossFit athlete is somewhere in between 27 to 28, showing that a large proportion of their body weight is actually made up of muscle. I myself gained 10 kilograms of muscle since I started CrossFit now 12 years ago, and maybe you or one of your friends have experienced the same since starting a workout in your local uh, CrossFit affiliate. Today we are going to explore why CrossFitters, both men and women, can achieve significant muscle growth through their workouts. We have five super interesting reasons to discuss, ranging from well-supported scientific findings to more speculation. I'm sure you can incorporate some of this concept into your own training. All right, let's dive into the science. But before we begin, let's get a couple of important disclaimers out of the way. Firstly, we'll be focusing on CrossFit workouts, which involve constantly varied movement performed under high intensity. While CrossFit athletes also engage in specific strength training, our focus of today will be on the workout of the day. For example, your typical three rounds for time of burpees and power cleans. Secondly, let's address the, the elephant in the room, steroids. Yes, we've all been seeing these cases of CrossFit athletes using steroids, which undoubtedly lead to high muscle growth. However, today we'll be exploring the physiological reasons behind muscle gains in your typical CrossFit workouts. We focus obviously on the clean athletes. Now that we've set the stage, let's jump into our first reason, volume. CrossFit watts are characterized by a high amount of repetitions at sub-maximal weights. Research has demonstrated that volume is a really critical factor in muscle growth. For example, a, a meta-analysis conducted by well-known exercise scientist Brad Schoenfeld uh, reviewed 15 studies comparing low-volume, high-rep training, so exactly what CrossFit is, to lower-volume, lower-rep training. The findings overall indicated that high-volume led to the most growth. Importantly, this seems only to be true when the load on the bar is equal or more than 30% of your one rep max. This means that a seven minute AMRAP burpees only likely won't lead to significant muscle growth. While burpees in combination with high rep power cleans at for example 60 kilograms likely will do the job in terms of muscle growth. Moving on to our second reason, muscle failure. Even when CrossFitters work with lighter weights or solely rely on bodyweight exercises, they push themselves to reach muscle failure during a typical watt. Studies have shown that muscle growth occurs when individuals perform sets until failure, even with light weight just above, as I just said, 30% of their one rep max. A study comparing quadriceps volume found that during three sets to failure at 80% of your 1RM produced the same extent of muscle growth as doing three sets to failure at 80% of your 1RM max. So the concept of failure as a trigger for muscle growth carries a medium to a high level of evidence. Now let's explore the third reason. And the third reason is constantly varied exercises. Yes, by continually changing their workouts, CrossFit athletes avoid falling victim to the repeated bout effect. This phenomenon refers to the point at which the body becomes so accustomed to exercise that it no longer experiences muscle damage or adaptation. A study published in 2001 by Nosakai co-workers examined the eccentric exercise-induced muscle soreness. So when the same exercise was repeated a few days later, soreness was significantly reduced. While muscle soreness isn't a perfect indicator of muscle adaptation, we all know that, this reason carries, let's say, a medium level of evidence. The fourth reason, CrossFit or, or functional fitness in general, is really interesting from a physiological perspective because it is the ultimate form of concurrent training, where both endurance training and strength training are combined often in one workout even. A recent study, really interesting study, provides insights into this. Subjects who engaged in aerobic leg training, specifically cycling with one leg, a bit strange, but they did this, at a moderate pace for 45 minutes before 
performing uh, a bout of heavy strength exercises actually experienced greater increases in leg muscle mass compared to when they, for example, only did strength training without the power aerobic component. The authors of this, this study suggested that leg, the leg pain aerobically had improved the blood flow, allowing for better nutrient delivery and muscle growth when they did strength training. Related to, to CrossFit, it, it's plausible that the extensive aerobic uh, conditioning, typical what is seen in CrossFit workouts, could actually enhance the benefits of strength training. Certainly, when both sessions are separated in different sessions, so different hours. And finally, let's address the last reason, which even is a little bit more speculative, but it's still worth mentioning because it's quite interesting. It's blood flow restriction. Previous studies have demonstrated that blood flow restriction training, where we limit the blood flow to the working muscles using, for example, a cuff on the arm, uh, you can enhance muscle growth even at extremely low loads. Although crossfitters don't use cuts, most of them don't, they may experience some form of blood flow restriction during a walk. For example, during a high rep thrusters, the heart pumps massive amounts of blood to